Thanks for staying with WDRB at 530. I'm Hayden Rostevsky. And I'm Scott Reynolds. WDRB's Tyler Griever sat down for 20 minutes with new Louisville men's basketball coach Pat Kelsey. The two discussed a hectic first 70 days, his brand new roster, the changing landscape of college sports, and embracing high expectations. Pat, really appreciate your time, sir. Uh, 70 days on the job for you. You've been busy, you got to get moved in, a family, and then you got to rebuild an entire roster. So how would you describe what this process has been like for you? Because now it feels like it's more accelerated than ever. Yeah, hectic whirlwind. The last 70 days have been a bit crazy. But here this week with all the players arriving for the first time, it's settled down a little bit. You're able to take a deep breath and focus on what you like to think you do best and what you love the most, and that's coach guys up. It's been awesome. We feel really, really good about after the dust is all settled, the roster that we've been able to assemble. A hallmark of this team and part of its true identity is the maturity of this team. We have a, we have a bunch of old heads. Right? We've got a bunch of guys that have logged a ton of minutes at the collegiate level. Not only have logged a bunch of minutes, but have won. As you move forward, it's good to have balance on your roster. We like to think we have a good core that we're going to build with here over the next couple of years. And we added some older veteran proven guys. Have you allowed yourself or taken a moment to kind of step back and get that, I don't know, that, that, that the view from up top of what it is? You said this is the pinnacle of your career. What's the old saying that the, uh, the days are long and the years go quick? Sure. You know, there were times over this past 70 days where those days were long and grind. Yeah, and, sure. But then when you look back on it, man, it looked like it, it went like a snap. I met Luke Hancock uh, okay. two days ago, came into the gym. He goes, PK, what's the best thing you've experienced. Like, give me one thing. Man, it's that almost daily moment where you can just get above the trees for a second, look around and go, I'm the head coach at the University of Louisville. How stinking cool is that? The model that aims to start in fall of 2025 would allow schools to share up to 22% of their revenue with athletes. So Josh Hurd talked to our Eric Crawford recently. What can we tackle as far as you know, roster limits and distribution of funds and all those things and what's the best way to approach it. I don't think there's a, a better example of building the airplane while you're flying it. We don't have $20 million sitting around. How do you feel about some of the recent developments since we haven't gotten to talk to you since that decision came down for revenue sharing? College sports in general uh, continue to change and evolve at a rocket's pace. Change is inevitable in every industry and when change happens, it, no matter the industry, no matter the business you're in, you better be ready and willing to adjust. If he leaned on you for advice or asked you, like, hey, this is a way we need to try and go, what do you think that would be? Well, I, I, first of all, um, uh, I'm lucky to, to work for an athletic director like Josh, who yeah. is extremely forward thinking. He is built, he was made for these changing times. Like me, ready to adapt, is running toward change. There's been a lot of coaches that have been around for years and years and years and years, and when all this happened, they're like, man, I, this isn't what I signed up for. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going in the other direction. I got too much time left, man. What is your message gonna be to Louisville fans? Uh, we're gonna win. Go cards. You have embraced that from the first, from the jump, really. What does that mean to you to yeah. be held to that? The standard? way I always say it is, Look, man, I can put myself in the shoes of Louisville basketball fans. Yeah. Because you know why? Because I'm a fan of the Cincinnati Reds and Bengals, and I am completely irrational. <laughs> <laughs> I just am. I hate to tell you this. I'm a Ravens fan. Yeah, so I was like four years, years old, but, you know, so, we so, can. So, so I get it. And we need you to bring it and be the best fan base in America. Hey, I get it. Very, very knowledgeable, very opinionated, and that's what I signed up for. Bring it. You don't want to be somewhere where there's apathy. You just feel it, man. When you go out into this community, you feel the passion that people have for Louisville basketball. Well, and you just get the feeling that Coach Kelsey will have that initial support that will be huge. Yeah, As absolutely. people look for the tide to turn on yep. this program. Sure. Uh, but he knows he's got to perform. Yeah. Right? And the team's got to perform. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I believe somebody asked me earlier, like, has your, have your views of him changed uh, after that interview? And I think that's a difficult one to answer because, mm -hmm. one, it's June 6th. 
everybody sounds great on June 6th. I, I don't yeah. mean to be that guy, but like we have a long way to go. I like the roster he's put together, uh, but more than anything, Scott, I, I really was interested to hear his point of view on some of the changes in college athletics because, like it or not, Louisville men's basketball has got to be a money driver for, for this program. It has to succeed for this program, not, to, not mm -hmm. even just this program, for this city to really thrive downtown and such. Louisville men's basketball is a big part of that, so yeah. his opinion on such a subject really matters. The crowds they bring downtown are huge for the business here. Remember when the $50 handshake would get you huge trouble with the NCAA? <laughs> now if you don't have 50000 for some of these players or way more, you're not going to get the kid and you might only have them for a year. Yep. Will they come up with a deal? Do you think I've heard it talked about that maybe, okay, you can get this much money from the university, sure. but you've got to commit to two years. Might that be something that will fly? Well, I do like something that he was talking about in terms of his roster construction that I think lends itself well to, to what you're discussing is that they do have a nice mix of, of veteran pieces who mm -hmm. I would term as more of win now type of guys, guys you have seen play at the power conference level or maybe at a mid-major level and they performed very well there so they deserve a shot at a bigger school. They have those. They have a few younger guys that have potential who I would see as maybe like being here at least for two years, maybe three. And I think that's what you have to try to, that's the challenge now of yeah. coaching is like, how much money are we going to set aside for players with higher ceilings that might be a little bit younger, i.e. a uh, right. four or five star high school player. Because you don't or, want them to transfer if they're not in that starting lineup right away and they go next year, I'm going to another school, you're recruiting over top of you know what the beauty of, of all of this is? None of us have the correct no, answers. We don't. We're still here trying to figure it out. But I will say this, uh, maybe as a final point, Pat and Josh seem to be aligned okay. on where this is going, well, that you cannot run from it, and that's big. Tyler Griever, stay on top of it I appreciate for us. it, man. Thank All you. Right. Thanks.